This PlayStation 2 doesn't work and we're going to try to fix that. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Justin and I try to fix broken electronics. This was sent in by a viewer named Lou and thanks Lou for trusting me with your console. I will try my best to fix it and try my very best not to damage it any further. The first thing to do is to plug it in and see what we're working with today. Okay, so we got the blog, and yes, I do have gloves on today. I should probably wear gloves more often, especially when working with older consoles, because no offense to anyone out there, but I found a lot of bugs in these before, and I don't want to touch those anymore. But plugged in and power on, nothing, nothing at all. No light, no, nothing at all. So. We're going to have to take a look at the power board, see if that's our issue. First thing we're going to have to do now is unfortunately take it apart. All right, let's see. Okay. First thing to do is use our little dental pick to remove these leg covers. And this is just a reminder. If you would like for me to take a look at one of your broken devices, console or whatever it is just reach out fix more wasteless at gmail.com and let me know i it's a free service in terms of like i don't charge you for the actual repair unless it's something big like if i have to replace the power board in here then i'm afraid lou is going to have to supply that but i don't play for the labor or i don't charge for the labor and Another thing you gotta really cover is shipping because, well, that's not free. So now we use our iFix a toolkit to remove these screws. Okay, now, this has already been opened, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is what it is. Let's see what, what the inside looks like and what we're working with here. Okay, you know, it doesn't look that bad. Have to get to the power board. Come on, I'm gonna put you here. And there is the power board. And this is quite dusty, but not, not terribly dusty, okay? To be expected for a 20 year old console. Now lift it straight up. Pull up there actually, whatever. Okay. Put that there for now. And then we can move this carefully over here. Power board is the first place you want to look when you have a no power situation on your PlayStation 2. Especially the fat version. I don't see anything around here that indicates these capacitors are gone so let's see let's get out our multimeter and see if we can do some testing all right in continuity mode let's see no not short it across there which is good but Let's see, when we plug it in, do we get any kind of power? No power at all. Okay. So is it, let's see, let's go back to continuity. 
Is it the fuse? No, fuse is still good. Let's see. Check to make sure the switch is good. Mm -hmm. So why? Okay. So that's how it works. So off. No con. No connection. Then connection. Okay. So it's not that way. That's dumb. On my part. So the switch is fine. I mean, usually it's this one or this one. Cap kind of likes to fail easily. It's not really fun trying to go through and replace everything, and I'm not quite good enough to know exactly where along here, you know, things are going to fail. I could remove these caps to see if they test properly. Okay, so is that out? See, that's got 127 volts. So this is charging up quite well. You can see that it's got quite a charge still. Still has 100 and some volts in it. So that's why we want to be careful, okay? This is why your best bet, your best solution to this if you don't know how to mess with power supplies like this is to just buy a new one on eBay. And that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And I just want to give it a look over. Because that's 220 volts, that's 100 and some volts coming out of there. And if you touch it, you, you, not good, not a good idea. So, but it is getting through here. And it's just not getting to here at all, right? So where does it get to is the question. Let's see, the two we want to remove that cap and that cap. We'll start with this cap, just because it's over here. That's out. It is a... 35 volt, 33 microfarad. Hold it there. Hold it. Okay. So I am getting 30. Good to know. We'll put it back in circuit. We'll go this way. And again, we'll add a little tiny bit of flux here. And this one is a 50 volt 22 microfarad. Okay, so we'll put the black one on here. Come on, stop moving. Did we get anything on there? 22. So it's also perfect. Okay. Well then. Now I'm really stumped. Alright, well... Those do seem to be the two capacitors that usually give you the problems, and there's clearly a lot of other things on here that could go bad. Other capacitors, you have these, like ceramic ones or whatever they are, and then this octocoupler here. Uh, this big capacitor seems to be doing fine, which means these, whatever these are called, um, rectify, um, voltage rectifiers or whatever. I 
they seem to be doing okay. Um, maybe this transistor or this transistor have gone bad. Those are areas that you could check. Unfortunately, I don't know how much further I can take this exact repair other than just to replace it with a new board. So I think what I'm going to do is contact Lou and tell him that it needs a new board. And if he agrees and wants to buy a new one to get this PlayStation 2 working, then we'll install it right about now. And you can see that it looks somewhat similar to the original board. Not entirely similar. So I don't, I had an idea of using this new board to try and test and see where I could, if I could figure out where on the old board the problem was occurring, but really there's a lot of differences here and I don't know if that's going to be effective. So, I guess the only thing really to do is to test out this new board and make sure that it is, in fact, working. And there you go. You can see 12 volts now. And that's what you need to power PlayStation 2. So turn this off, let it die, drain down. Now these capacitors are still going to be pretty active. So we do want to be careful here. I'm just going to install this one into the PlayStation 2 and hopefully we'll get it powered up. Before I do that, we're going to help them out a little bit and clean it because it's messy. And I am about out of Q-tips finally. After a year and a half of doing this, my Q-tip supply has finally run dry. Reattach it from there to there.
now we get to test. Ah, oh. except for we can't test because I didn't put that in there. Dumbass. Why didn't you guys tell me that I was missing a piece? Huh? You let me go all the way to the end. There. Simple. Okay, so now, now we can test it out. Gord. In. Power. Power. All right. And. Disc open. It does. All right. Okay, that's a problem. Open and shut. It's because it's dirty inside. If I pull it all the way out, it doesn't. I guess I'll have to clean out the laser assembly, which means I'll have to take it apart again. But that's fine. It's worth it. And then we'll test it and see if it reads the disc. Hopefully it does. But it turns on now, which is great. Actually, let's do this right here. Turn it off. Now we can get in here. Sometimes, if it's set for a long time, which if it's been dead, it probably has. Some of the stuff just builds up a gunk and it kind of gets, I don't know, crusty or something like that and makes it harder to open, which causes you issues. So just cleaning it out can really help. Let's see, open. It opens. Okay. It will work out there. There you go. All right. Now, before I reinstall those for like the third time, let's test this out. All right. Well, I did plug it into a TV and it reads a disc. So this PlayStation 2 is now in good working condition. And that's good news for, I think, uh, Lou, who sent it in. Thanks again for sending this in. Glad I could fix it. Hope it works well for you for a long time. And that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something useful from it. And we'll catch you in the next one.